we look down there into a composite crew from Lyon, France and Melbourne University, Australia and Sydney University. In the Town Challenge Cup, the women's four. We just saw Leander and Molsey go head to head a couple of races ago. So it's an interesting combination, this French crew, that even the Sydney University athlete, she's partially French, and they met each other on exchange. And one of the girls just got in touch with us, said, you're over here and racing in another event. Would you mind jumping into this four and joining us to race at Henley? That's right, Fiona Ewing from Sydney University Boat Club. Her mother is French and her father is Scottish. So I think all four girls in the crew actually speak French, which is fantastic. And of course, on the left-hand side, University of London and Leander Club. here out of the start the town challenge cup the newly named trophy as we heard just before unveiled this year in june by sir stephen redgrave the chairman of the regatta three new trophies unveiled for three new women's events that were introduced last year and the racing in the sports events has been astounding today really close races each one it's been great it looks like here the university of london leander composite seem to have moved out to about half a length Suddenly come to the end of the island, 45 seconds or so gone. The University of London, the Anik, are just looking a bit more lively, a bit more racy, don't they? Yeah, well, this is hard for Fee in the three seat, who we were just speaking about. She actually raced in the in the quad in the Princess Grace uh, only a few hours ago. So big ask to turn around on a hot day like this and jump in the four as well. But it's just a throw together four and great idea for them to jump in and give it a go. No, but brilliant, definitely really good. Essentially, when you have this, when you row twice in a day, it does hurt quite a lot more. But once you get like 30, 40 seconds into it, it all gets a bit numb, and then you just, you just the power is there, isn't it? You just have to be tough with it. That's right, and that's what you train for as a rowing athlete. We always used to look forward to race day because racing wasn't anywhere near as hard as training, and I think that's the key. If you know that your training is a lot harder, that you're looking forward to the pain of race day, then you're probably doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And here the Leander crew really settling into something quite sustainable, clear water up. Rowing really nicely, actually, in that yellow boat on the far side. So this French crew, I don't know how many, how many outings have they managed to have since they've been here. Look, I'm not too sure, but I can't imagine it would have been many between Fee having to row in the in the quad and get a few rows in that done. They've progressed through to tomorrow in that. And they also went to the Hollenbecker, didn't they? The Sydney the New South Wales athletes. Yes, exactly. Fiona Ewing and Karina Simpson from Sydney University Boat Club racing over there at Hollenbecker. So they've had uh, a pretty packed schedule with women's Henley before that as well. So a great trip. So it's interesting here, isn't it? We just had a men boys eights race with coxes who were steering and they were all over each other. Here we have two coxes fours race where nobody can see where they're going and they're miles apart. I always find that quite astounding that quite often in the coxless boats we seem to have better quality of steering than in some of the cox races. So we'll go I think, figure that one out. Yeah, exactly. So here the UL Leander crew moving up nicely. It's a really nice solid rhythm there. You're in clean water, right kind of distance off the booms and really have this race under control by the looks of it. In that crew from University of London and Leander, Ali French in the bow seat, 22 years of age, Georgia Statham in the two seat, 23, Emily Lindberg, only 19 years of age in the three seat, and Isabel Powell, 23 years of age, in the stroke seat of the crew. They were British University champions in the four and the eight. and they're here out to about maybe a length of clear water ahead of the French crew. Um, you can just see that the, the British crew on the, on the right hand side here in the middle of the screen now. Just more drilled, more together, more uniform technique. Clean rowing there. So you can there, you can see that on the, on the water around the crews, there's quite a lot of popple, isn't it? The waves and the launches driving up and down the side of the lake, creating, making it quite difficult to row through there. And it is particularly difficult in the four and the pair, the boats, the smaller boats where you have one or each, 
to control the steering and, and to keep the boat straight in these conditions. It always is deceptive, I find, on camera. It looks quite good, the water looks quite flat, but then you can see that run against the boat, that actually that water is very rolly. We have a lot more pleasure craft out and spectators out on the water, and the water really does chop up and make life difficult and sometimes. And it's just going to get worse over the weekend now, it really is. So you can see a little bit there from the University of London crew in purple, just by the rigger, there was a bright yellow box, we can't see it anymore unfortunately. That's a stroke counter, it tells her the speed she's going out using GPS and also the strokes per minute and then they can call what's happening in the race. Here again we were earlier looking up the Thames. There in the background we see the 3.33, that's the time the crews took to get to the 40 mark. So people can see that up and down the course. And really no work here at all for the umpire. So here in the French boat, this is the Leander boat here again, the blue box there at the feet there. That shows them the stroke rate and what kind of speed they're rowing. And it keeps the, the stroke person informed as to what they, you know, they, they've got a certain set cadence that they want to race at. And it means they keep an eye on it. So I'm seeing now whether the York crew has the confidence now just to take the work off a bit and save themselves for racing over the weekend funny because even though this looks like a clear margin to us when you're actually in there in the boat it doesn't seem like that much it, it almost seems like no matter how much distance you get that it's never enough and it we did see um i think it was the bedford school the other day who were paddling down the course and just caught a crab uh while they were rowing along so you do have to have your wits about you you have to be careful even when you do decide to take your foot off the pedal i thought it was really good in the commentary yesterday um, in this position here, Sean Colton was a phrase he used, which I really like, is that even though they're winning, nobody's comfortable here. You still have to work pretty hard to keep this margin on this French crew. Exactly. We know it's the kind of course, the kind of racing where anything can happen. So there won't be any point where these crews really feel like they've got it in the bag until that buzzer goes when they cross the line. And this crew now that they've, they've got this kind of margin, they're going to want to find a solid rhythm, find some really efficient movement so that they feel more confident tomorrow for their racing. You know, you're not just finishing this race off now, you want to sort of make sure that you get a few things in place, make sure the calls work so that tomorrow you're going to be a bit better. As they come down past the enclosures, you can see the crowds, some feet hanging in the water there on the edge. It's been very warm here today in the last couple of days. All the more reason for these crews to conserve a little bit of energy where they're able to. They're still working pretty hard, aren't they? They are. Really, you can see the effort they're going in the stroke seat, leading up to them very nicely. As they come down to the line. Solid row there by University of London and Leander. They haven't really taken their foot off the pedal at all. In fact, I think that this from France and Melbourne University and Sydney University perhaps got themselves into the race the further they went down the track but unfortunately a bit too little too late.